STS-92, flown by Space Shuttle Discovery, marked the 100th mission of the Space Shuttle. It launched from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, on October 11, 2000, bound for the International Space Station. Four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, making shuttle history and building our future in space. Houston now controlling. Houston. Roger roll, Discovery. Discovery's roll maneuver is complete. The orbiter is now in a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 200 statute mile orbit and a rendezvous with the International Space Station Friday afternoon. Three engines aboard Discovery now throttling down as the orbiter prepares to pass through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Discovery is already traveling 1,000 miles per hour downrange from the launch site, three and a half miles, currently at an altitude of six miles. Discovery, go with throttle up. Go with throttle up. All three main engines now back at full throttle. All uh, systems aboard Discovery, three auxiliary power units providing electrical power to the orbiter along with the uh, three fuel cells, all performing well. Downrange from the launch site, 10 miles now at an altitude of 14 miles, traveling uh, 2,000 miles per hour. Now one minute, 35 seconds into the flight. At this point, Discovery's already burned more than two million pounds of fuel and weighs half of what it did at launch. Standing by and, uh, for burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. That coming about 10 seconds from now at the two minute, five second point. confirmation of the SRB separation. Again, the three hydraulic systems and three electrical systems aboard the orbit are in good shape. All three main engines still performing well at 104% of rated thrust. The twin orbital maneuvering system engines now are firing. Discovery, two engine bend. Two engine bend. And that call uh, indicating Discovery can reach Ben Gurir in Morocco in the event of a single engine failure. Again, however, all three uh, still operating in full. STS-92 was an ISS assembly flight that brought the Z-1 trust, control moment gyros, pressurized mating adapter 3, and two DTCU heat pipes to the station. On October 13, 2000, Discovery approached the station and docked with PMA-2 attached to Unity. After docking, the crew used a cannon arm to lift the Z-1 truss out of the cargo bay and bring it to berth with the Zenith port on Unity. The Z-1 truss was the first permanent latticework structure for the ISS, very much like a girder, setting the stage for future additions to the station's major trusses. The Z-1 fixture also served as a platform 
on which the huge solar arrays were originally mounted. The Z1 contains four large gyroscopic devices, called control moment gyroscopes, which are used to maneuver the station into the proper orientation on orbit once they were activated following the installation of the US laboratory module. During seven days of docked operations with the space station, the STS-92 crew conducted four back-to-back -back EVAs. Over the course of those spacewalks, two teams of spacewalkers and experienced robot arm operator collaborated to finalize the installation of the Z-1 and to deliver the third pressurized mating adapter, PMA-3, to the Nadir port of Unity. PMA-3 would accommodate shuttle dockings for future berthing of new station components. During the fourth spacewalk, astronauts Wysoff and Lopez Algeria tested the safer jetpack, flying up to 50 feet away from the station while remaining tethered to the spacecraft. On October 20th, Discovery undocked from the station and the crew spent an additional four days in orbit. Then returning to Edwards Air Force Base on October 24, 2000. It was finally time for the beginning of permanent habitation of the ISS to begin with Expedition 1. Expedition 1, consisting of Russian cosmonauts Yuri Gidzenko and Sergei Kirkolev, with the American William Shepard, launched on Soyuz TM-31 from Baikonur on October 31, 2000, riding a Soyuz U rocket to orbit. The Soyuz carried the crew of three to the ISS over two days. At 9.21 Universal Time on November 2nd, 2000, the Soyuz docked with the Svezda module of the International Space Station, which had formerly housed the Progress M13 cargo craft. The crew of two Russian and one American would spend over three months on the ISS. In the initial days, the crew brought a variety of life support systems online and created a laptop computer network that helped run all systems on the ISS. The remaining months were allotted for exercise and space endurance practice. The crew was the group to launch the permanent inhabitation of the ISS, and since their launch, both the ISS and space have been permanently occupied. While aboard the station, Soyuz TM-31 served as the crew's lifeboat while it was docked to the ISS. 
and the Expedition 1 crew would return to Earth via space shuttle during STS-102 in March of 2001, the Soyuz TM-31 spacecraft would stay docked with the station and bring back the next crew to launch. The second cargo ship, Progress M14, was launched by a Soyuz U carrier rocket from Baikonur on November 16, 2000. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, the spacecraft docked with the Nadir port on the Zarya module. During docking, the Kurs docking system failed and the manual backup, the TORU, had to be used for docking, which was ultimately successful. Progress M14 carried supplies to the International Space Station, including food, water, and oxygen for the crew, and equipment for conducting scientific research. It made history as the first Progress spacecraft to resupply an expedition crew aboard the ISS. It was also the first Progress spacecraft to make two dockings with the ISS, a feat that was not repeated until Progress M15 in 2012. Progress M14 remained docked for two weeks before undocking on December 1st, 2000, for 25 days in free flight. Progress M14 would be in free flight while the next part of the station would launch the P-6 truss. 